Hi everyone, I hope today's video finds you excellent. I am excellent because it is a beautiful day out here today and we're, while it is relatively nice, it is rather windy. So we're gonna be using this gargantuan windbreak with built-in shelves for today's video. So what we're gonna be talking about is sights. And I've got a couple motivations for today's piece. First and foremost is to cover the sights, both this set and that set over there because well, they're nice sights. But then the second motivation is that I've got several rifles that are pending review, and these sights and those sights have found their way onto multiple of those pieces. And there's this phenomenon that occurs that if I have covered a product previously, then somebody might say something along the lines of, hey, what sights are those? Or, hey, what, what optic is that? What rail panel, grip, et cetera, et cetera. You guys get the idea. Somebody may ask that question in the comments, and by the time I've gotten around to answer that question, some diehard that watches every stitch of everything that we do here has already found that, responded to it, and probably in most cases supplied the link. And sometimes that I'll get there and there'll be seven or eight people that are below that and I'm like, wow, my work here is done. You guys make my job so easy that if I just do a little bit up front, then you guys do it all for me. So I appreciate you out there, those of you who do that. So today we're gonna give you all the tools that you need to be that guy in this particular instance. So the first set that we're gonna cover is gonna be a set of flip ups. And these are both products from XS. So this is gonna be like a backup iron sight. And then the other product is going to be a 45 offset sight. So if you're only interested in the 45 offset sight, then I will have it chaptered below so you can basically mouse over to that or click over to that or screen tap, I guess. Yeah, if you're only interested in this product and you don't really care about the flip ups. So we're gonna do the flip ups first because I feel it, there's the most to cover. So first and foremost, I have a set here of the previous gen flip ups from XS, and the only difference that I can see on this set of sights that has been absolutely thrashed over the course of the last several years is that this button has changed. The only thing that I can think the reason why they would have changed this is to make this more snag resistant because this has a little bit of a rim on it, and I can totally see that being a thing. Now, the only problem that I have had on this particular pair of sights is not actually anything related to the sights. We were doing destructive suppressor testing where we did, I think, like four cans, like back to back, where we blew them up. We shot them on full auto until they exploded. <laughs> so we did like 12, 15 mags of full auto back to back, and the rail got so hot, the site literally took a chunk off the rail and just took a dump. So that's not really a problem with the site, it's a problem with the rail, but the whole this being steel thing, steel can stay harder when hot than it's more dense. You guys get the idea. Steel versus aluminum plus heat equals things. That aside, let's start with the front. So obviously we have a, uh, a flipper that we talked about. So it's a if you want it out of the way, if you want to run an absolute co-witness or something like that, you have the ability to throw it up there, zero it, and then do that. When it up, it locks. When down, it does not lock. So it'll flip up. It's not button driven or anything. It's all manual. It attaches via a single screw. It goes through it and it looks like it takes up two sets of end lock or yeah, two M locks or two Picatinny rail sections. Yeah. It does take standard posts. So if you want to run another post other than XS, I don't know why you would. This one has their tritium post in there, so it's white paint with tritium in the center of it, and it adjusts with a normal AR tool. The rear sight is a little bit more interesting. It's got the same push button thing, it also locks when up, does not lock at the bottom, obviously that would make no sense. And this is your windage adjustment, it is knurled and serrated so that you can do your adjustments without any tools or anything like that. And then it has both the low light aperture and this more precise daytime aperture. But then on top of the daytime aperture, it also has a close range zero. There's gonna be an offset between the bore and your line of sight through your sights. And it's gonna be about that much. So if you're shooting inside that ballistic arc, as in the bullet has not apexed on its way to that zero, then you're gonna be somewhere between the zero and the bore. Well, at seven yards, that's gonna be approximately maximum. 
and you can use that with the front post and hit precisely. It basically just changes that angle ever so slightly. So you would normally be shooting low, now you'll be shooting true. All metal construction, I don't think there's a single piece of plastic on, let me check the, yep, that's aluminum. So there's not a single piece of plastic on this set of sights. These are currently mounted on a new Bushmaster. This is post Remington debacle, and this one should be coming out probably in the next week or so, because I did most of the work on this one over the winter, and I just finished it a few days ago. So hopefully I'll get to the editing here pretty soon. That said, there's a difference in philosophy between something like a flip up sight and a 45 offset sight. So in my opinion, these are something that you would use with an unmagnified optic. So you got these folded down, you're looking through your hollow side of your reflex or something like that. Say the thing goes down or maybe you run at a different zero on your irons than you are on your, your red dot or something like that. You have the ability to flip those things up and then look directly through the housing without the need to remove the optic. If you're running something like an LPVO, for instance, then I think a 45 offset sight is much more applicable. Now, the biggest problem that I have with 45 offset sights most of the time is that they try to do too much. A 45 offset sight is looking through the mag magnified optic and then, oh, I need to take a really close shot without the time to pull that magnification all the way in. We rotate the rifle over and we can see through a second set of sights. Now, obviously this is gonna have a difference in orientation. You're gonna have to zero these individually from say these ones, which you would be able to basically put your red dot on, get it to hit, and then move your irons to the correct place. This is gonna have to be independently zeroed. Anyway, most of the time when we talk about 45 offset sights, they are usually something that looks like this product over here that has been moved to the side. And in my opinion, that's too much. The problem with mounting a peep sight on the 45 offset is not in the exact same place that you would normally expect it to be. So if I'm looking through this optic and I rotate this gun over, I am not looking through that sight currently. I have to remove my face. And if I'm running a peep sight, then I have to find the aperture, look through the aperture and then find the front sight. Whereas if I'm looking at this particular site, what they've done is they've created a housing, essentially, that holds one of their standard close range, fast acquisition V-notch sites, and then a high visibility post site. And in my opinion, the utility of that is much greater than having all the full functionality of a normal site because it actually is fast acquisition. The other thing about having something like this, a precision sight, if you will, mounted to this is typically speaking, especially in this instance, because I'm missing this section of rail here, this is gonna have a laser here. So I don't have the option of using this all the way up here. So my sighting radius has shrunk. A lot of times you'll see those 45 offset backup iron sights have a very short sight radius relative to the whole length of the rifle. That makes them, I don't wanna say less accurate, I just want to say that the margin for error is a little bit higher on those. So when you're talking about trying to integrate a 45 offset sight, having a very complex 45 offset sight is in my opinion counterproductive. So as far as this rifle, because I know that people are gonna ask, this is the brand spanking new CMMG rework. This one's actually in 300 blackout. It is a short barrel rifle and it's going to be a new suppressor host. It is replacing my 300 Blackout Poverty Pony that I have absolutely run to death. Again, this is gonna be more of a nighttime gun, so it's gonna have lasers and stuff like that on it. So uh, right now it's set up with this LPVO for accuracy testing, but here pretty soon these are going to leave and there's gonna be uh, more stuff piled on this than would allow a traditional sight to be used. And that's kind of the motivation for having these sights on this gun. I'll be completely honest and say that the third motivation for this is I needed more sights, okay? Uh, I reached a point where I was at a bottleneck. I literally could not start testing because I did not have enough aiming devices for the number of rifles that were here for testing, which is a good situation to be in. So special thanks to XS for curing up that whole mess that I was in. But also, I want to say that these are the two profiles of sites that I've been using for years. 
And these are the sites that I choose to use for the reasons that I stated. And your mileage may very well vary. And if it does, then I would love to hear from you because there may be some things that I did not fully evaluate or I may not have been exposed to. So your guys' input is always valuable and I will always look into the things that you suggest because I am one guy, you are several hundred thousand strong at this point in time and I thank you very much for tuning in to today's video. These are definitely something that if you haven't seen before, you should definitely look into. Thank you all for tuning in and special thanks to our patrons on Patreon and Subscribestar that make today's video possible. And you should see their names on screen right now.